Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode. And today we're talking about how to stay focused on your art. But before we get onto that, we just want to say a big thank you to our latest Kofi supporters because you really help us keep this podcast going. We're going to thank each of you at the end of the show. Yeah, we always really appreciate the support. Not only does it help us towards running Kicking the Creators, which helps us keep doing what we do, but it also shows that you like what we do. So thank you. Oh, you are there. I thought you'd fallen asleep for a second. Well, only because <laughs> on my notes it says you're saying something else first. Does it? Yes. Oh, not on my notes. It says, according to a study conducted by no, Northwest no, 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 University. Ah, 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 don't say it. I moved it. I moved it. <laughs> Okay, so we also want to thank everyone who's been sharing their work for the challenges with us on social media. Um, I've got Julie Turner. She has done the Urban Sketch Challenge. And I I say that in past tense because we're now in August and this was a, a July challenge. She did some absolutely gorgeous sketches for that. Um, I really want to do some more urban sketching. I, I, it's one of those things... I never get around to doing, but I always really want to do it. Um, Joanna Brown, she also did that sketch as well, that sketch challenge. And um, and she tried out a few different ways to approaching it. I think she did some courses as well. And she had a little fight with herself about what she's enjoyed the most. Um, but the one that she described as a dog's dinner uh, seemed to be the favourite with everyone including her in the end. So it was definitely <laughs> mine anyway. So she, she stuck with the dog's dinner style. And <laughs> I think it's amazing. Uh, Robert Murillo. Um, Robert did some amazing portraits for Portrait July. And I believe he's also been inspired by you, Tara. You'll find your art style videos. Um, and he did some amazing sketches as a result of that. And also one more, Marion Rogers. She kicked off the 31 Animals August with a a lovely drawing of a moose. So how about you, Tara? What has caught your eye? It's hard to say about August at the moment because we're so early on, aren't we? I mean, by the time it says it won't be so much, but it is at this stage. Yeah, we're trying to get an extra one recorded and early, aren't we? But it's funny you said about that find your art style challenge because I did that. It must have been a couple of years ago now, wasn't it? Yeah. People seem to be finding it now because we've also got Terra, I'm going to say this wrong, Terra Letnes Aelo. Sorry, I probably really hacked that. But she's been doing some um, fruit drawings and they were really lovely. They were over book text and they were using charcoal. She didn't think she liked charcoal, but she mm. basically said that she'd been looking through some of the Find Your Art Style Challenge. Um, mm-hmm. And she's, I think she was sort of using that as a basis for what she was doing. But then there's also Roving Jay, and I just love her urban sketches. She's just a complete genius at it, both people and buildings. And I really love this building she did. She said she got a sketch pad that was basically just working like blotting paper, just so she was having to kind of work around it. So what she'd done is drawn this white building just with like a ink, but then just put some tiny dots of colour, I guess because that's all she could do with it spreading so much. Um, yeah, and it just looks so cool just because these tiny dots of colour and the rest was black and white. Really love that. Um, yeah, I mean, she is so good. She's so clever, isn't she? She is. I never tire of her stuff. Mind you, I don't tire of anyone's stuff, but anyway. It's, um, it's always exciting to look at her stuff. What is new with you? Since last ah! week when we recorded. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's been. Well, Oh, so seven long days. We spoke about 24 hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like 24 hours ago. Uh, no, it's you're going away, aren't you, Tara? Uh, again, again, leaving me again. <laughs> yes, I'm going away September. Um, so we needed to get, yeah, we needed to get another um, episode recorded before you go away. So um, we're doing this much earlier than we normally would. So not a great deal has changed since we last spoke, um, other than I am 
a hair's breadth from finishing my commission, which I'm so pleased about because... And I'm absolutely sure that by the time we next record, it will be done. And I'm really glad because it means I can, you know, I've said this before on the podcast that when I work on a commission, I feel in a way that it almost stops me working on anything else because that's all I can focus on. And you get to a point, don't you, where you're like, I really want to do this. and I really want to do this, but I need to do this first. And So, yeah, I'll be glad when that's done because then I will have many more things to say when it it comes to what's new with me. (laughs) Yeah, that feels like it's on a deadline, isn't it? Because that's being paid for. So you feel like you need to get that done. Exactly. And you've got somebody's deposit and you feel like you've taken their money or some of their money. And you're just like taking forever to do it. It's the nature of the kind of painting I'm doing at the moment particularly because a lot of the pigment is white which in oils does take a long time to dry so yeah um I just can't wait to get that done now and out out of the way so I can I can get on with with other things so anyway what about you well you know you were in that really crappy mood about your art weren't you you have been (laughs) Well, you well, have. I say crappy. I think I became. I think I found myself feeling like I was in a little bit of a rut and needed to kind of just have a bit of a play, which is what those bums were all about. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was in a bit of a crappy mood. That's all I was going to say. I was in a really <laughs> crappy mood because you know I was really. You know when you get those phases when your art's just going right, and you do get those phases, yes. don't you? And I yeah, was absolutely. having. Absolutely. I was having one of those and then last week I did a couple of drawings and oh they were awful and one just felt so I couldn't understand why it felt so laboured I've never done these drawings and felt like they were laboured I think I've realized what it was now it was what I didn't didn't lay down enough charcoal so there was too much to do with the pastel so it just felt like I was coloring in I guess but yeah but they both just look terrible. And, and it put me in that terrible, terrible mood. I also spoke in a Twitter space. This is verbal speaking. There's um, a woman who, who is quite high profile in the NFT space. And she hosts a regular Twitter space where artists can go up. You remember I told you, you can go up and talk about your art. Yeah, and yeah. I happen to be... You have to do it on your phone. You can't dial in on your computer. But I happened to sort of spot that she'd got this Twitter space going on. So I just joined it. And then she goes, oh, she goes, Tara, well, I think we'll have Tara up. And I'm like, oh, God, God. You know, immediately your stomach starts churning. Yeah. Because yeah. you know then she's going to call you. But it wasn't straight away. Anyway, so I went on. But because I'm nervous, I think I come across terrible. <laughs> <laughs> But, and because I just, I'm almost trying to fake confidence, I think. Do you, do you know yeah. what I mean? And I think I go totally the other way and then just sound like a bit of a jerk. But also... <laughs> what, what did you say then? Nothing really bad. But, oh, the only the only <clears throat> thing was, oh, this is really, really stupid. She says to me, um, she basically said how much she loved my art. It was her and another woman who were talking. Mm. And she said... She's got a friend who is something to do with the Royal Academy. And she says, uh, have you ever been to the Summer Royal Academy Summer Exhibition? And I said, yes, I have in the past. And you remember what that was like, don't you? This is where uh, Adele took you. Oh, that one. Yes. 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 And, and I said... Adele being my daughter, by the way, anyone yes, listening? Yes, sorry. <laughs> So basically, this exhibition, we've, we've both been to, I, I haven't been, it's probably 10, 15 years ago I went, but it was quite modern, and when I say modern art, it was a bit weird art, because, and what I said on this space is, was, oh yeah, so, so it wasn't really my thing, it was like a bit Damien Hurst, I basically meant really <laughs> modern art. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and what I was really thinking, because like some of them looked like they were practically falling off the wall, they had these makeshift frames and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course this is her mate who runs this and, she, and she's gonna put me forward for you know to be part of this she goes oh she says because originally she said oh, I think I'll you know get in touch with my mate about you maybe doing you know connecting you with this Royal Academy of course I'm oh just wow 
Well, no, no, I've just completely put my foot in it, haven't I? Because I've just basically said that it's rubbish. Well, maybe she didn't take it that way, though. Well, yeah, I think she did. She, she sort of goes, oh, oh, well, I think I'll conquer her anyway. <laughs> and I thought, oh, you idiot, why can't you just keep your mouth shut? But I can't, I can't just say, oh, yeah, it was really good. Because that would be wrong. I know what you mean. It's it's funny actually because what you, I, I'd totally forgotten how what the Royal Academy was like because when you talk about the Royal Academy, you automatically think, "Wow, high end, very big names, incredible stuff," don't yeah, you? Yeah, you do. I didn't feel like that when I went. I felt like it was um, it was kind of like a if you went into a secondary school. And you went into their art, uh, art block, or a foundation, the kind of thing maybe. you'd stay, you'd sort of find there, which is really great. But it wasn't what I was expecting for the the Royal Academy, which I put no. in quotations because I expected it to be very, very different than it was. I mean, I just remember a big blow up banana, kind of half deflated. Yeah, I don't know what it was there for, but that's that was apparently an installation. I thought it was a, a comfy sort of like inflatable seat that people were supposed to sit on everything in there i guess is is supposed to be up i don't know or maybe we just don't get it or we don't get it yeah but my problem is i didn't feel like i i don't feel like i can lie and say oh yes i thought it was great Mm. and i didn't really know what to say which why i said oh Oh, maybe we need to do an episode on maybe we need to do an episode on fake it till you make it (laughs) (laughs) How to, How to pretend it. you like things to get what you want. <laughs> yes, that, that might be a, that might be an episode for oh. the future. But anyway, but it put me all in this really downer mood because I just thought, oh, you just completely shot yourself in the foot. You've done some terrible drawings. And I was just in one of those, you know, those, oh, you're useless moods. You know what I mean? Mm. And then I didn't want to draw um, this week. So like yesterday I decided I was going to do some drawing. I got up in the morning and I thought, oh, shall I just work on my website or do something like that and I thought no you've got to do it because the longer you don't do it the longer you won't want to do it so I made myself draw and remarkably I was actually quite pleased what I did which is kind of weird it shows though doesn't it oh uh, how much that mood affects yeah it's terrible <clears throat> yeah and actually Awful. if you had have let that mood get to you and you hadn't have made yourself get back on the horse if you like yeah um then you wouldn't have done that drawing that you really like. And now, no doubt, you, you're itching to get back in the studio again. Yeah, well, I mean, I, now I'm not scared of drawing again. Mm. I have still got something I need to try that I haven't tried yet, but I'll talk about that later. Okay. No, it is really interesting, though. One thing that goes wrong and that's it, isn't it? It's like, oh, you know. Yeah, it just knocks yeah. your confidence. Well, it was two things, but it knocks your confidence. But one of the other problems that we get as artists, apart from obviously having our confidence crisis, um, that we get on a regular basis. I think most of us do, whether you're a beginner or someone who's been doing it for years, um, is staying focused on your art. That can be quite hard, particularly maybe like you, Tara, where you've you've perhaps done one or two that you're not so sure about and then it's easy to kind of focus on other things such as your website and and this and that and anything else to do with art that's not actually creating that's another another way you can become detached and start you know i don't know doing things that really aren't that helpful to your your actual journey if you like they help so, i mean don't get me wrong stuff like that is is very useful and you need to do it but yeah. not if that's your escapism from exactly yeah. It's a difference, isn't it, as, as whether you really need to do that or you're doing it to kind of procrastinate about the other thing you really avoidance. need to be doing. And you're yeah. Sca- yeah, avoidance tactic, exactly. So we're talking about that today, how to stay focused on your art. And uh, this is where that thing comes in that I, was, I, I moved <laughs> yeah, right. um, from earlier on. So according to a study conducted by Northwest University Highly creative people are generally more easily distracted than the average person. Now, I've said this a load of times before that my um, reports from school, every single one of them, easily distracted, 
easily distracted, easily distracted everywhere. And, and I was, I abs- and I absolutely still am. I mean, I think creative people really do seem to have a gift as well for welcoming those distractions, almost with open arms as a way of procrastinating, I think. And um, maybe there you know, is I'm a just bit of thinking about. I'm interrupting you now, but what I was just thinking about is I wonder if we're easily distracted because we get all these ideas popping in our head. And that is what actually makes us creative because we're mixing up this cauldron of ideas. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Sorry, carry on. But it can on. also... No, no. I mean, uh, it can also be a bit of um, avoidance as well. Yeah. <clears throat> it depends where you're at, doesn't it? I mean, maybe there's a bit of fear involved. Maybe it's a way of avoiding failure. Or maybe it's just in your nature to be flaky, like like me. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I I find it so easy to get distracted from doing my art, and it's not necessarily procrastination for pro, for the sake of procrastination. I think it's something I'm just prone to in all aspects of my daily life, and I'm one of those people who who look for something I've lost. And then I'll find something that I lost previously and that I'd forgotten all about. And then I'll forget the thing I was looking for in the first place. <laughs> That's the kind of person I am. I'm terrible. So I think for someone like me, I think it takes a lot of self-discipline and some organisational skills as well to get past that and to get things done. And writing down exactly what I intend to do and when I intend to do it is one of the best solutions I've found for me in the past. And it's something I so often neglect to do. But when I do do it, I am a lot more productive. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And I've always found that when I block out specific times on my calendar to work on my art, um, that works very well for me. Better still, take the time uh, maybe on a Sunday to plan the whole week ahead. And if it's there in black and white, and it's blocked out on your calendar, you'll be far more likely to actually get on with it and get things done than you would if you were just trying to squeeze it in between everything else when you get a chance. Because say, for instance, you just thought, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll, on, um, on Saturday morning, I'm going to do that. Uh, and then your husband comes up to you and goes, oh, actually, do you fancy going to the garden centre this morning just to collect some, you know, help me pick up some soil and we can have a look around at the plants or whatever else you do when you're 51? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so appealing. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds very appealing, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, or, OK, this is a better one. Do you fancy going for a pub lunch? You know, it's the sort of thing that I'll instantly go, oh, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. But if, because if I've got nothing written on my calendar, it's a blank space. I can do what I like. If I've got something on my calendar that says between the hours of uh, 11 and 2, I am doing X. I will look at that and go, actually, I can't until 2. But as soon as I've finished at 2, yeah, we'll go. Yeah. That's it. And it's so silly But if it's not written down, it's almost like an anything goes space. It's a, well, I hope to do art there. But if something else comes up, for some reason, I I will then feel like, oh, well, I've clearly got nothing in my calendar. So I'll I'll do this with Paul first and do that when I get back. But it's the wrong way around. I need to say, I'll be done at two. So, yeah, we'll we'll pop to the pub for a lunch after two. And that can almost be like a reward kind of thing, can't it? But it has to be written down. It's not good enough for it to be. And this is, I'm talking about me, and I'm sure a lot of other people will relate to this. It's not good enough if it's just in my head that I'll do something. I have to write it down. Otherwise, I'll just get distracted. Do you know the problem with writing things down? You need a pen. And I went through a phase (laughs) of finding pens in the sink. Do (laughs) Do you remember me telling you about that before? Two, no. two or three days running. This was about a year or so ago. I kept on finding me pens in the sink. And, and they don't like work you... very well if they've been no, covered in fairy liquid, do they? <laughs> it's like you... No, they'd just be lying in the bottom of the sink. And I'd like, why are my pens in the sink? I don't know. <laughs> but it is like one of those weirdy things. But one of my biggest culprits for getting distracted is Twitter. It's so, so bad. And... Um, but I think, you know, regularity is the key to avoid distraction, isn't it? So if you schedule your art like you're saying, it makes everything else you've got to work around that. Because I decided 
I think it was last week or something, I thought, I'm spending way too much time on Twitter. So what I'm going to do is I'm not allowed to go on Twitter until I've made art. Because otherwise, you know, I've wasted an hour. And it's not wasted because I am marketing, but it means that's eating into that time and I just don't get started when I should. Um, well, there's no but point then in also marketing on something when you've got, you, you, if you're just doing marketing and not creating, you're soon going to run out of stuff to market, exactly. aren't you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that yeah. regularity as well. So uh, me saying that I'm not doing Twitter till later is because I much prefer to work in the morning. So if I can work in the morning, I know I'm much more likely to get stuff done and it's more likely to feel like I, I feel in the right place to do it. And also certain days, I like to have certain days when I create. Now, I've been trying to a lot, like a Monday and a Friday, to definitely yeah. create some art. And that generally, I change it, but generally they're the days I want to do. Because I know on Friday, I'm not going to feel like doing admin type stuff. And that means I have a nice day to sort of look forward to or a nice morning. So I know not everybody can do that because you've got certain commitments. But if you can put certain days or certain times aside, I think that really helps as well. Also, I think it helps if you don't just have it written down perhaps on your calendar or on your phone. I mean, my calendar's on my phone. Yeah, I've started to find that if I, if I actually sit down and type up on a piece of paper, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday or, or whatever, and what I'm going to do those days... So it's written really old school and print it out. I find that works better than my to-do app. I don't know why. Yeah. I think it is because you forget to look a, at your to-do app. It's a visual thing, isn't it? It's visual. Yeah. So if, if you have it on your computer or, I mean, I use Google Calendar and it's great and it's fantastic for, because it syncs up with everything, like syn- syncs up with my phone and my, my, my Nest or Google um dot thing <laughs> alexa all those sort of things um but there's something about having it on the wall where you can see it actually written out there's something very different about that it's a bit like having a the difference between having having a say a, a pinterest board full of inspiration or having a pin board on your wall with your inspiration on it yeah it's kind of something you're going to pass all the time yeah. And also, it's something where even a calendar where Paul can see, oh, no, she, I, I won't ask if she's blocked out that time to do her art sort of thing. Whereas he's not going to go on my phone and look through my calendar. <laughs> do you know what I mean? This so I do think, I do, yeah, I do think that having something written down, you're, like where you can see it visually, yeah. you're far more likely to stick to it than you are if it's just sort of hidden away on a computer and I also think the actual act of actually scribbling through the things you've done is mm, oh yeah is kind of nice as oh, well there, there's something about ticking something off a list isn't there and, yeah and do you know what sometimes I do something and I I do something I, I hadn't really I wasn't going to do but I do it and then all I do is I write it down so I can tick it off <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. it just feels good yeah. it just feels good it feels like oh I've been so productive I must add that and, and tick that off you know but uh, once you've booked out the time you need for your art, um, don't then make the mistake of turning on your computer at that time or checking your texts or your emails. They have absolutely got to wait. The chances are, if you go down that route, like Tara just said with Twitter, you, you're going to find yourself down an entire rabbit hole. And it is so hard to get out of that. And that's where the self-discipline comes in. And it's not easy um, so the best thing to do is just not, you know, just not open anything in the first place because you're going to feel compelled to answer if a text comes through or if an email comes in. You're going to think, oh, I've seen it now. I've got to answer it. Um, when you're about to start, this is another thing, you know, don't don't think, oh, I'll just pick up this art book for some inspiration or just flick through this art magazine on my desk or you know, do anything else like that that's related to that. Because you might think that that's fine because it's all about art at the end of the day. But there is a time for that. If you start looking at those things at that point, those things are only going to hinder your progress. They will not help you. So absolutely save those things for when you're done. And actually think of them as a reward for what you've done. You know, there's nothing more I want to do than pick up the latest art book that I've got. 
I really want to read it, but I need to think to myself, okay, well, once I've done this, oh, I'm going to curl up on the on my reading chair with my coffee and I'm going to flick through it and that'll be my way of thinking, oh, I'm done, I can just now relax and read this, you know. So, um, yeah, don't let those things distract you. YouTube said, videos as well, that's another one, isn't it? Oh, my gosh, don't don't watch those just as you're about to paint, whatever you do. No, I mean, I also think reference photos are a problem like that. Well, they are for me anyway, or they have been in the past. So if you use reference, what you can end up doing is you're about to start a new painting, but of course, you don't know what you're going to paint, do you? It's this morning when you're supposed to be painting. So you then start delving through photos. And say for me, I say I'm looking through for faces. Well, I don't like the first face I find. I'm very, it's, there's only certain faces that I'm really drawn to. So I could easily sit there for an hour looking for a good face to draw. And while I'm there as well, once I start finding good faces, I'll keep going because I think, well, now I'm start, I've started looking for faces, I might as well get myself a bit of a stock ready. And then all, it, all that happens is I've lost my first hour of the day. So I think if you prepare your reference like the night before or a couple of days before, you can just start straight away. I mean, I've now got a big folder full of faces. So I can just go on there and I can pick one of them. But what I also like to do is go on the night before and I'll at least narrow it down to maybe five pictures that I'm probably going to look at the next day. Otherwise, I'll just spend as long looking for the face as I will the painting it. I don't know. I don't know if you have that. I don't suppose you do because you create your own photos, well, don't you? I didn't, well, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I set up my own references and that takes a while in itself. But if it's sketching, say if yeah. it's like one a day of sketching and I'm not going anywhere particularly, I might, you know, think, okay, well, I'm going to sketch some figures. So, yeah, really good idea to, to get some actually already to work from rather than... And that's actually a really good idea for when you're doing, say, a 30-day challenge or a 31-day challenge. So rather than, you know think every day okay right I'm going to do this this um, day's challenge what's the prompt oh it's this right what am I going to draw that'll take you 15 minutes at least before you even start so one of the the best things to do in that way is to actually get the month's worth of reference you know yeah. out there in advance so every morning you've got it there and you know what you're doing but your your folder full of faces then Tara <clears throat> you haven't got to mine yet no. Is it because you're not drawn to my face? Put your, I haven't actually put your face... I've drawn you before. No, but I mean in your new style. Oh, no. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my new style, <laughs> I did... I don't, know if you saw the, yeah, I don't know if you saw the video I made the other day. Did you see it? I made one no. about my reference, where I get my reference. Not where I get oh, my reference. Oh, do you know what? I did start watching that, and but I had to have you got it on bored, silent did you? because... No, no, and I thought, I'll, I'll watch that later, because I had it on silent, because Paul was on the phone, and I was sitting right next to him. So I put it on, and I thought, I'll watch that later, and I forgot all about it. Actually, it good, I, though, I, wish, I could see. What, what I wish I'd done is made it much snappier, because people, they won't watch. And I sh I'd got about 15 seconds before I started showing my reference, and I don't think people will hang on that long, will they? Do you know what I mean? Unless they're people invested. People have got no patience, no. have they? <laughs> well, I haven't either. People aren't focused no. at all, are they? Um, no, no. But what, what it was, was I was basically showing how I, I, because I think people sometimes assume I don't use reference, but I do. Um, but I showed how they don't actually look like the reference. You might sort of see a little bit of them. I don't know if you saw it silently, but it showed which picture yes, I'd use for which. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so... Yeah, finding, finding a face is, is really important to me. But I was going to say, actually, you said about preparing photos if you're doing a challenge. We have actually got a few little PDFs. We've got one on hands, one on faces, and one on animals, I think. And I think we've got, oh, by mistake, I've done 99 hands instead of 100. <laughs> or something like that. Or one of them has got one short because I messed up. <laughs> And it's Actually, to I think that sounds a bit good. That sounds quite good. 99 hands. Yeah, but all husband. they are is... It's a bit obvious. It's, <laughs> it's free, royalty-free photos and these little mm. PDFs that will sh work on your phone. Um, so if you sign up for our newsletter, you can get access to those. So some people have been using... I know someone was using a hands one. They were doing a month of hands and using that little thing that we put together. So yeah, yeah if you yeah. want that, so sign up for the newsletter. Anyway, also, chores can wait. 
and now this is always I'm always quite happy for chores to wait I know you're not <laughs> but <laughs> but I was telling you wasn't I before we came on on air that um when I worked at home on my own and say we'd have a dishwasher on the night before I wouldn't empty the dishwasher when I got up I would wait and do it at lunchtime so when I was about to put my stuff you know in the wash I'd I put everything away first. But now Kevin works at home the majority of the time and he's a Mr. Tidy person. And so I now feel quite often in the morning like I have to do it because I feel guilty because otherwise he's going to do it. He won't wait till lunchtime. There's no way the dishwasher could wait till lunchtime. So I'd let him do it. <laughs> well, no, but yeah, but he's so, he's so good like that. You feel guilty. Do you know what I mean? If I've left all the pots, the new pots sitting on the top, it just mm. just feels wrong. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It's it's hard, isn't it, when you've got well, if you are a bit of a, a neat freak, it's um or it's you live hard with to walk one. past something. Yeah, or you well, or you live with one. Yeah, actually, Paul's very. I'm lucky. Paul's is a tidy person as well, but I am. But um, yeah, I mean, if I'm going to go on the way to the art studio and I've got something time booked out between eleven and two. Uh, or 10 and 2 or whatever, I try really hard to just walk past it. I'm like, no, I'll do it at 2. Because wh- what's the worst can, that can happen? And nobody's going to see it unless you get some random visitor that just pops up, you know, it pops matter, in. Does it doesn't No. Um, and then they're not allowed in anyway, are they, till 2 They're not o'clock. allowed in. Well, funny, that's some, I, I was going to talk about visitors. <laughs> <laughs> but first of all, let me talk about if you've got kids, when you've got young kids living at home or teenagers or whatever. I mean, God, they're a distraction. Um, sometimes when you've got young children, it's, it's not possible to get away from distractions. Um, when my kids were at home, I found a great way to get over that was to kind of get up an hour earlier than they did. And I used to use that alone time to work without any distractions at all but I do think it's harder if you're trying to perhaps work on a big serious piece like an oil painting or something because if you're anything like me then you you kind of want a decent chunk of time Um, so it's harder but if you just want to brush up on your sketching skills then it's an ideal time to get that done and I know that um, Carrie Waller who we have interviewed in the past you know, she when she her children were really young she used to actually um, sketch at night so she'd wait until her um, kids had gone to bed and then she'd do her paintings then because obviously she needed a good chunk of time but she was a kind of creative night owl I I've never been a night owl anyway and my creativity I always feel more creative in the morning so um but it, I suppose you've got to try and work do what works for you but um yeah it is harder when you've got children that's for sure uh, visitors they can be a distraction like we just said I mean, obviously, you really do want to make time for your visitors. Of course you do, or to visit other people. But, you know, if somebody wants to pop over for a cuppa, then, you know, say, yeah, that's absolutely fine. I'd love to see you. Can you come at X time? Because that's when I would have finished my painting. But don't allow it to break up your day because chances are, once you've walked away from your art, you will not get back to it. And I'm so guilty of that, you know. If somebody says, oh, I'm going to pop over for a cup of tea later... I find that if they come in the middle of the day, I'll automatically decide that, well, there's no point in really starting anything before they get here because I, you know, I'll only have been working for a little while and they'll, I'll have to stop. But then what happens is once they've gone, I then don't feel like I've got enough time to get into something afterwards. So I end up doing nothing at all. Um, And that was a, that was a problem for a while. So I have actually toughened up now um, if somebody does want to come over, I always say to them, oh, would you, if, if it's right with you, would you come either sort of early in the day or late in the day? And that way I can still do the art Don't that I need to do. Don't have to see you too long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, there is an element, isn't there, of being an artist that forces you to be selfish. And there is absolutely no getting away from that if you want to take it seriously. It's just what it is. But, you know, it always makes me laugh because... um. If you were, if you're trying to do it as something to earn with, say for instance, you're you're an artist who sells. If you worked in a shop or a bank or I don't know a hospital or somewhere where you have to actually go to work, you could never just say, "Oh yeah, 
yeah, just pop by my work and I'll come and see you and we'll have a cup of tea. You can't do that. So that's where you kind of have to treat it like a job almost, don't you? Well, it is well, a job, actually, isn't I'm it? working. Yeah, I'm working at this time. So, um, yeah, if you can come when I finish, brilliant. Well, I'm lucky we don't get many visitors, so... <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm such a loner. <laughs> I'm such a, such a loner. <laughs> I, having met you several times, Tara, in the flesh, lots of times now, you are not an unsociable person. I don't like people dropping in, that's for sure. No, I mean, I don't think anybody <laughs> wants that really, do they? Because, I mean, the worst thing that can happen is you, you, your house looks like a bomb's hit it and, you know, you're naked or something, your hair's all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Somebody knocks on the door, it's like, oh, this is not a good time. <laughs> you know when you have like those naked days where you do your house no i don't no have, on, i don't kind of have those you don't no i don't strangely enough no no actually i don't really <laughs> honestly i, I don't. think you do don't you <laughs> yeah. no never yeah. <laughs> there's nothing there's liberating also... about hoovering naked at all it's just too wobbly i wouldn't want to do it <laughs> <laughs> no, i don't i never use a hoover actually Kevin. No, Kevin does Kevin's the hoovering. In charge of the does hoover. he do naked hoovering? Uh, no, I've never seen him naked hoover. I'm trying to think if yeah. he hoovers in his boxer shorts, but I don't think I've seen that either. Not even <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> definitely try it. Okay. Now I'll we're getting it. distracted. I, Let, can we? I think we he might do be another one. How now, to actually? Re- <laughs> we should do another episode. Called how to how to remain focused on your podcast topic about being focused. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, another, we've gone off topic again. Another big problem is phones. Aren't phones such a distraction? Oh, Not only are there yeah. people calling you, texting you, but there's also those social media, bing, you know, saying you've got this new like or whatever. So the best thing to do if you're drawing is just turn it off so it doesn't disturb you. I mean, I always find that I get this person, I'll be just doing me, um, starting me drawing, and I'll get this text pop up, and it'll be... You know on the podcast, shall we do this? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who that is. Yeah, who would that I don't be? know. That squeaky boy. But yeah, I get I get that quite a bit. So uh, I do forget <laughs> to turn it off sometimes. <laughs> but oh, yes, that's best so, so rude. But also, not do you know only... what the worst thing for me is? What? What? Just quickly going on about you know you get those um your phone goes off. Yeah. When I was doing a lot of Twitter. Yeah. Um. And you know, you could set your notifications. Yeah. I, in the end, I had to turn Twitter off. And now I have, I have all my Instagram things come up and I have anything, emails, whatever, that's fine. Twitter drove me nuts. I got, it, it, it was like, I can't even begin to tell you how many tweety things would come up as notifications. And it was, it was hundreds and hundreds. And it wasn't like anything to do with my stuff that I was putting up even. It was just so-and-so's posted and... It would drive me mad. So in the end, I, I had to physically go into my phone and cut off my Twitter notifications. I thought, if I want to see, I'm going to go in and have a look because that was driving me bonkers. Yeah, yeah I mean, I've got my, my Twitter is shut at the moment, but there's an icon on my, my uh, you know, desk at the top on my computer and it says 21. Yeah. It's like 21 notifications of things because um, I, set, yeah. I set notifications for certain things but it hasn't popped up it's just but I can see it's there so even that is a little bit distracting um, yeah because you'd think what are they yeah what is could be something good. what is one of those yeah yeah it could, it could be but as well as your phone as in for those texts and social media I also find that it's a good idea if you think someone's likely to call you call them first before they call you so for example I often paint on a Friday morning and I know it's highly likely unless she's already called me that my mum is going to call me or unless I've already (laughs) called her because I usually pop over and see her on a Saturday, her and my dad. So it's best if I call her before I start painting because otherwise she's going to ring me and I'm going to be up to me elbows in charcoal and paint and then it's going to stop me mid-flow. So I think that's that's a, a good thing to do. Make the call before they call you. Um, you might also actually want to use some apps for blocking social media. You know, you were just talking about your Twitter notifications. You might... Well, and do not disturb for phone calls as well is a good one. Yeah, but... The, that's not an app. That's just built into your phone, isn't it? But but for the apps, I, I know for a bit on my computer, I had something to block Twitter. 
And it wasn't the fact that I was getting notifications. It was the fact I kept on checking it. So it yeah. would stop me checking it. Because it's bizarre. What's that app called? Can you remember? Can't remember. No. But there's quite a lot of different ones. There's different ones for your Mac. There's different ones for your phone. But if you just, just uh, search for social media blocking or something like that, mm. you'll find one. But it's really odd because you think, right, for the next hour, I'm not going to look at Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is. Sure enough, within five minutes, you'll find yourself clicking on it. Well, I, I would, anyway. Yeah. It just almost becomes that habitual kind of thing. And, they and also, it might, be, it might be that you're perhaps looking at a, a part of your painting thinking, oh, that would make a really nice post, actually, for Instagram if I just zoomed in and cl- did a close-up on that. So then what happens is you, you think, oh, I'll take a photo of that. So you take a photo of it. And then what you should actually do is think, right, I will make a post about that later. But what I have found myself doing in the past is then thinking, oh, I'll just quickly put that on Instagram. And then, of course, I go on Instagram, I put it on there, I post it, and then I see I've, I've already got some notifications from some, some you know, people messaging or commenting, and I think, oh, oh, I better have a look at that, actually, while I'm on. Oh, I, I ought to answer those, because those people have taken the time to, to, you know, message me. I'll message them back. And then by the time you've done that, an hour's gone. Yeah. And it's like, oh, God, my paint's drying in front of my eyes, and... and so don't don't do that. Don't do that. Just take the photo, put your phone down, carry on, and do it later. Actually, I, I was taking a lot t- more time painting yesterday because I decided that I was. I've seen s- some of these social media posts, and instead of just having a straight time lapse, what they do is do everything real time, but tiny little sections of it. Do you know, do you know what I mean? And then they switch the little section. Yeah, yeah, from different angles. So I thought, I'm going yeah. to try that. So I ended up having, I've got this arm, this like tripod arm thing that I can connect to a desk. And so I had my phone hanging. So, But literally, I had this phone, but instead of just constantly painting, I then have to keep moving this arm and put it in different places. And it's amazing how, I mean, that's sort of a, a necessity. Well, you know, it's useful. But it is distracting at the same time. Maybe you could um, think, okay, well, my painting's going to take me roughly three hours or whatever. Yeah. So, but f- f- on one of the paintings you do a week, you think, right, an hour of that time, I'm going to be using my camera to do different angles and for a good reel or something. So you're you're automatically you're, you're thinking of that painting. This is the one where I'm going to concentrate on, you know, using opportunities for social media posts. Yeah, you can. I mean, that is worth doing it. But trouble is, social media eats content, doesn't it? It wants so much content. God, it now. does, yeah. And so uh, yeah, I like, I mean, I, I literally record pretty much everything I do. But it's just they're not getting much engagement at the moment or they're not getting much mm. many views. So I thought, I'm going to try this different way of doing it. But it does take longer. What I should really do is just set up a couple of cameras at different angles Mm. just leave them running yeah. and then chop and yeah. change and zoom in bits you know on on editing but. okay so what about when you have set your day in your calendar uh you've prepared your reference in advance you've left your husband uh hoovering naked in the living room <laughs> um your kids are in bed uh the phones are off you've called anyone you need to call and you've got your apps on to keep you out of your social media. So you've done everything. But you get into your art room and you, you're you sort of like, you don't feel quite in the zone. Do you know what I mean? You walk in there and you, I don't know what it is. There's a certain feeling when I walk into my art room that I get. And I don't know whether it specifically helps me because I do, I am very lucky and I do have a a room dedicated to my art. Um, but the minute I walk in there, I'm generally speaking, then I'm like, right, I'm in the zone because I'm in here. But you might not have that. You might not have um, a dedicated art room. Um, you might have a, a corner of, uh, I don't know, a corner of a kitchen or part of your kitchen table or a corner of the bedroom or whatever. That doesn't matter. But what you could do is you could try creating some kind of a trigger for you to get in that zone. And when I walk in my art room, there's something about going in there, and I have fairy lights in there. I have them, like, all wound around the plants and things like that. 
There's something about when I switch on those fairy lights that instantly makes me feel like this is painting time now because it's almost like creating that really inviting environment and it makes me think, yes, I want to be here. So for you, maybe, I mean, I know I've heard this before. I think it was on the Your Creative Push podcast um, where somebody had said that their their trigger is, actually, I think it might have been the host himself, Mike Young or, or Youngman Brown, as he's known. Um, I think he used to light was it a chakra? Is it a chakra? Chakra? I'm not altogether familiar with what that is, but um, it was a candle, presumably a scented candle. And that was his zone to get in the podcasting zone where, you know, he'd light it and instantly feel, okay, it's, it's podcasting time. And you might have that for your, for your creative time. And if it's, it, what you basically are trying to do is you're trying to find something that will trigger your mind into getting into that zone, your creative zone. And once you've been doing that for long enough, there will come a point where the moment you smell the scent of that candle or you see those twinkling fairy lights, you're going to go straight into that, automatically into that, into that creative zone. It's surprising how the brain works and it's association. It's something about the association that makes that happen. Before I go on. Yeah. Have you got one? Have you got a trigger that gets you into your zone? I do a few jumping jacks when I get in my brain. A what? A few jumping jacks. What are they? You know when you, you do your arms raised, you know that exercise you Star do? Jumps. Yeah, that's it. I've never heard them called jumping jacks before. That's star what they're called, old school. You do star yeah, jumps. Is that your trigger? <laughs> oh, my God. Is it really? It isn't. No. <laughs> So you haven't got one then? No. It's just I me. Haven't. I just have a cup of tea. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've always got to have a cup of tea. Um, okay. You could also listen to your favourite music or your podcast. I, I was going to say a, a playlist. Actually, I used to have a painting playlist. I've still got it, actually, on Spotify. But what I found is it's very repetitive after a while. You can have, like, 300 songs on there. But it was, you'll still go, oh, God, not this one again, not this one again. So actually, I, I, you know, I tend to listen to, I kind of mix it up a bit. I mix my, my favourite music up with podcasts as well. And obviously, I know the people listening to our podcast. Now, we're obviously your favourite podcast. So, you know, you can listen to us. But we've only got so many podcasts that you can listen to. So there's plenty of other amazing podcasts out there. Not necessarily art-related. I love the science-y ones. Um, I really do. Um, but anyway, regardless of what you like, it will help you get into the zone. But the the thing about it is it's more likely to keep you in the zone for longer. So, for instance, if you go into your art um, studio or your art space and you sit down and you start working in silence. Um, for me, silence is incredibly distracting. Isn't that weird? But it, I find it very, very distracting. Um, if I put some music on or a podcast or something like that or an audio book or whatever, it it kind of keeps me in that zone for longer because I don't get distracted by the silence and and in fact I want to listen to it until the end so I'll keep going and I'll go oh, I'll listen to another one and it's really weird because for me as a realism painter it stops me from overthinking about my art as well so if I'm solely thinking about my art in silence it I can get too deeply um, I can't think of what I'm trying to say or what the word is. Yeah, you get analytical like, over what you're painting. Yeah, I'll think about it too much. What happens when I listen to a podcast or or some music or something is I'm listening to them, but funnily enough, I'm not um, over-invested in either. It's like I'm painting away and then I'll think before I know it, oh, I finished that bit. Oh, well, that's, you know, I've, d I've made real progress there. But for some reason, it's like I almost can't remember how I, I got to that point. A bit like when you drive a car and you, you know, you start thinking about other things. And before you know it, you're where you were going to be. And you're like, how on earth did I get? I don't even remember going out of my driveway. Do you know what I mean? It's one of those. Um, actually does me a favor because it does help so me the opposite. not overwork things. Yeah. What are you like then? I, I can't listen to music anymore. I used to always listen to music mm. or a podcast when I was drawing and painting. But now I have to have 
just quiet, complete quiet. I can't, and I, I think I know what it is, and I think I know why you need it as well. Because when I used to paint, say the, you know, the animated, the, the characters looked a bit more like caricatures, the bright ones. Yes. Yes. Well, there'd be quite boring areas of those. I would have already drawn it out, so there's a pencil outline there, and there'd be, I want to call it boring areas, they'd be colouring in. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> funny. But there'd be areas where I'd got to put big bits of colour, and it, it, I think it didn't require thinking so much. So I would use it as my entertainment, almost. So the entertainment yeah. would be the music while I was doing that bits that were kind of a little bit boring. But the stuff I do now, I don't have colouring in. Because it's not... I don't know exactly what they're going to look like when they're finished. If that makes sense. So you work in silence? Now I work in silence. Oh, you see, it's funny, isn't it? I can't, I can't work in silence at all. Because I'm making decisions all the time. <clears throat> um, I know you're yes. making little decisions, but I'm making... I'm not actually sure what I'm going to do with this. And so I kind of like to be completely engrossed in the work. And it's not like I'm spending ages colouring a bit in. It doesn't work It's like interesting that. you should say that about you making decisions and needing silence. Because going back to the whole driving thing, yeah, I, can, I always will listen to music or a podcast or something while I'm driving until I'm in an area where I'm not sure where I've got to go. Yeah. And I need to think, I need to concentrate on, uh, right, what direction am I going? Where am I going? Yeah. And then I can't listen to a thing. So I suppose that's sort of a similar thing, isn't it? You've got some thinking to do, proper thinking. So you need absolute silence so you can just concentrate. Yeah, that's very interesting. I do wonder, I I mean, I don't know if I could do it with a podcast. It's just I never have while I've done these this type of work. Mm. I've never tried it. Funny enough, I rarely listen to art podcasts, though, when I'm doing... Um, art I tend to listen to more travel and there's books and travel one I love and there's lots of sciencey ones I really love and I think it's because tell me about these sciencey ones after because I don't know which ones they are I like the infinite monkey cage with Brian Mm -hmm. Cox that's a great one I love Rutherford and Fry curious cases of the curious cases I think right oh so fun so good Really, really good. I love them both. So I listen to a lot of that. Books and Travel by jo- Joanna Penn. I really enjoy that one because she takes you on a journey and to another, basically another country, another culture. <clears throat> and it's one of those yeah. ones, it's very, interest- very interesting, but um, you don't have to listen to it to hear it, if you know what I mean. It goes in, but you don't have to concentrate. And it's not like I need to know every- all of this stuff. It's just not, it's almost feel- feels like, and I, people have said this to us about um, our podcast, haven't they, where they work, quite often with us wittering on in the background of their while they're working and they say that it, they feel like they've got company yeah. in yeah. the studio which is great for us it's lovely to think that we we are keeping you company in your studio as you work but um I I do get that as well I, I feel like that when I listen to podcasts I feel more like I've got company than I'm just on my own listening to music so I'm much more I I listen to podcasts much more than I do music these days but um We've talked about how important it is to obviously get in the art studio, but but um, and obviously now we're talking about getting in the zone and staying there. But that said, don't actually forget to take regular scheduled breaks. I don't mean have a break to have visitors or anything like that. I mean just to step back from your piece, give yourself some room to reset, go and make yourself a cup of tea, move around for a few minutes, and you'll look at your piece with fresh eyes when you come back if you work on something for too long without taking a break you can easily overwork a piece before you know it and besides that we know we need to move it's surprising once you're in the zone just how easy it can be to sit in one position for several hours without actually moving and that's actually not a healthy practice at all so we've got to remember to move about sometimes and actually, I've I've got an Apple Watch, and it always gives me a nudge if I've been sitting down too long. Um, it it's um it it says it's time to stand. <laughs> I get this little buzz on my wrist. It's pretty cool, really. But if you don't have one of those, then just set yourself an alarm, um, perhaps to remind you to get up and have a little walk about. You know, sometimes there I think there's that isn't there called 
don't know if it's called Focus. I should have looked this up. I used to have it, actually. It's an app, I think, called Focus. And um, you, you basically, it's based on the Pomer- Pomodoro. We did that. Oh, Pomodoro. And we actually did um, an episode a long time ago. Where we talked about this Pomer- Say that again. Pomodoro. Pomodoro. Effect. Pomodoro. Pomodoro effect. Basically, that means a, a tomato. Um, it's tomato timer effect. Um, and it, it sets you time to create and then time to take a break. So it might be an hour's creating, five minute break, an hour's creating. 10 minute break, half an hour creating, half. You can do it however it works for you, but it just reminds you to get up and move about. And that is really, really important. Yeah. Another thing I think is if you're doing social media regularly, and like Sandra said, you suddenly think, oh, 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 I'm going to just post this on social media. It really distracts you. So a better thing might be to try and schedule that maybe at the beginning of the week, or if you've got a month's worth, do a month's worth, but I could never do that much in one go. But I, no. I've basically prepared all my social media for this week. It's all the, the annoying thing is that you can't actually schedule reels. So my reels are as draft in draft mode, ready for me to just to push the button. But I've got everything now. I'm, I've decided on now that I'm only posting Monday to Friday, and so they're all ready to go. So the good thing about that is. I've not got to think about, oh, God, what am I going to do for social media today? Because it's done. It's ready. It's one thing gone from my mind. So I can just do my art and not worry about it. But I've only just started doing that more recently, doing as much as I can. Um, Especially if you you also bring in some of your older posts. So that helps fill it up a little bit as well. So you haven't got to think about it too much. And a good thing as well is if you can, if you've got space, Maybe you could leave a little tripod or something or leave your phone in a way, have it so that you could easily film something so that each time you, you know, you're getting ready to work, you haven't got to set it up again. It's all ready just to put your sketch pad or whatever underneath it and get going. I know you can't always do that. I'm really, really lucky to have an art studio, which is obviously a dedicated space I've, I've seen before, but obviously not everyone's got a space like that. Um, but if you can just have a small area, even if it's just, um, I don't know, a space in the corner of your living room or your kitchen where you can have your materials laid out, ready to use, it's going to make a massive difference to your productivity. And, you know, it means you can cut out that time where you've got to get everything out and set up and ideally have a place where you can leave everything out as well. Because, I mean, sometimes the only thing I have to do, obviously, is I need to wash my brushes out afterwards. And I'm sure that's the case with most things apart from maybe watercolor um but if you if you've got somewhere you don't have to worry too much if it's left in a bit of a mess <laughs> or at least just have everything ready to go so say for instance if you get a, a chance like i don't know um actually i've got an hour i didn't know i was gonna have you know great use it to get you could use it to focus on your art but that's going to be hard if you've got to go first of all and think right okay what am I going to use where are all my things I've got to get all that out get, get this out if they're all there ready it means you can focus on the art first and you don't have nothing that gets in the way of that yeah I mean I think even if you just leave a sketchbook and a pen near the sofa and yeah and I used to that because like my time for sketching used to be you know at night um, when we're sitting watching the telly, so you know whatever your creative time of day is, just get that sketchbook. And I think it used to be on a coffee table. I don't do it so much now because I'm doing the painting more in my room. But that sketchbook and that pen were there, so I had no excuse not to pick it up and do something. It was like not a barrier that you know how lazy you get. You can't even be bothered to walk in the other room and get your sketchbook. Yeah. So it was there. There was no reason not to. So work out your creative time of the day and leave just that sketchbook and that pen there ready. Yeah, we did an episode, didn't we, on Art Studio Tips, I think it's called, going back a while. But we talked about, I don't know if it was that one or there was something on creating an art space. And we gave lots and lots of tips, not only if you have an actual art studio, um, but also 
how to create an, a space just for your art if you haven't got an art studio. So for anyone out there, and probably most of you actually, you probably won't have an art studio. It's, it's not often people have that. But if you are lucky enough, then um, great, we've got lots of tips for that. But if you're not, then we have lots of tips into you know making an art space um, in the house that will work as best as it can for you. So yeah, yeah, I always used to keep a sketchbook in the car. I haven't done this for ages either. I think all COVID was kind of messed things up. You never went out, anyway, yeah. did you? But I remember always keeping a little sketchbook in the car. So then if we parked and say I was waiting in the car and Kevin was popping out to pick something up or whatever Mm. I might just draw something while I was waiting just draw something out in the car park and that's a great use of dead time really isn't it yeah so um talking about time what is your most creative time of day morning for me yeah mine too that's the problem isn't it because if you can figure out your most creative time of day that is when you're going to be I don't know more more likely to get in the zone isn't it more likely to stay focused on what you're doing but it is hard when perhaps you work say for someone who works full time for instance and they've only got Saturdays and Sundays and maybe Saturdays they're knackered from their their work yeah or um they can only work in the evening it must be harder it must be much harder to to get in the zone and I guess that is just about trying to um get into a habit of doing something and then they say uh, oh, I don't know they say it takes at least 80 days or something to create a habit once you've created that habit then it'll be easier but it isn't easy to feel creative at one time of day when you're naturally meant to feel creative at another but um if you can possibly figure out when you're most creative when you feel most creative you're more likely to get things done if you can create during those times do you remember Jason Chambers, who we had on the podcast? He used to use his lunch hour to do little sketches of his, his cubist drawings. And then oh, he did, yeah, yeah. His friends used to have a look through them. And, and that's when he got, I think, really into his art. But yeah, I mean, a great way to use lunch hour as well. I was going to say one final thing. It is a really good idea to set goals for yourself, regardless of... What whether it's uh, somebody set you a challenge or you set yourself a challenge or a goal, you know, set them because, you know, or at least set yourself a list of weekly tasks that you want to get done and then you know, obviously prioritise them. But once you've, say for instance, you're um, at, on a Sunday, you look at your calendar, you're booking out some time to focus on your art and you're like, right, I need, and write a list of what's most important. Firstly, it's actually creating your painting Secondly, it might be taking some um, shots for social media or making some reels or something like that. Whatever it is, um, it might be I need to organise my website or update my website. Um, It might be you want to do a blog post this week, whatever. But make sure the creative side comes first before any of that other stuff. Because like I said earlier, if you don't create the stuff in the first place, you've got nothing to talk about anyway. So that actually has to come highest in your priorities above everything else so once you've done your creative time and then you then then you would prioritize other things such as I'm going to create a a reel for Instagram or whatever but the best the, the most important thing is do not divert from that you know finish everything before you start the next thing because it's much better to get one thing done than it is to get lots of things a bit done you know half done so um, that's that's another way of, of you know, organize. it is about organizational skills, I think. And that's not something I've ever been brilliant at, but I, I, when I write things down, I just get so much more productive. So now you've listened to this episode, go and write yourself a list of all the things you want to get done next week, then block out the times you're going to work on them and see how it goes. Have you finished? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to hear me breathe? (sighs) Yes, please. (laughs) Right, now we're going to read out the answer to the last question. And that question was, what art-related things have you been scared to do and why? Uh, Oh, is it me? (laughs) Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, I should know because it's the long one. (laughs) So I have got Jim Whaley Art. At one point, early to mid-pandemic, 
I was supposed to attend an artist's reception at a museum about an hour away. I had already RSVP'd and mentally prepared myself to make a brief appearance and stay distanced and masked. That morning, they had live TV coverage on the street next to the museum. The town had a festival going on and there were hundreds of people milling around unmasked and completely unconcerned about any space limits. Due to my medical history, I was a super high risk and it wasn't unusual to go, a day at, go days at a time without seeing another human. By the time I was getting ready to leave, I was physically shaking at the thought of the crowded conditions. I called and left a message, but they'd already started preparing and didn't pick up. I feel horrible that fear got me at the last moment and I missed it. But that's understandable, isn't it? If you've got, yeah. um, if you have, uh, you know, have health issues when there is a, a worldwide pandemic going on, I totally get that. Yeah, I think you can be let off of that one and I don't think you should mm. feel guilty about that at all. No, no. So I've got PM Schmeidel. And they say, there is a live figure drawing class in my town, but I'm too afraid to go. I'm not confident enough for people to see what I'm drawing. And that's exactly It's quite funny. If you... If, that episode. Yeah, and also, if you imagine the, the model, if you're the model, you've yeah. got people there that are far too um, shy to you know to show their drawings and yet as the model you're waving your bits around yeah <laughs> for all to see to for, to draw so i wonder who do you think in a live drawing class is more nervous and shy is it the person standing there with no clothes on feeling very vulnerable or is it the people drawing somebody with no clothes on feeling very vulnerable hmm. i wonder though if the people that do do the modeling do they feel vulnerable or are they just People that feel totally comfortable, you know. Well, the one I did did because she sat on a mirror. Yeah, well, there you go. (laughs) (laughs) She wasn't shy, that's for sure. (laughs) Uh, I have got Rick Fravor. I would have to say murals, honestly, because of my poor eyesight. I'm afraid to navigate ladders and lifts without extreme supervision. Well, yeah, of course. I get that totally. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. I, I actually have a fear of um, lifts and ladders anyway, without being, you know, having any sight impairment. So, uh, yeah, I can imagine. Have you got a fear of heights then or not? Yeah, um, I never used to have. I never, ever had a fear of heights when I was young. But as I've got older, I don't have a fear of lifts, but I do have a fear. I don't like going up ladders at all. I really, really do not like going up ladders, um, specifically ones that are not actually tied onto something, you know. Um yeah, I'm not I'm not good at that. I'm not a particular fan of going up a ladder though, but they never seem very safe <clears throat> no. ladders like that, do they? I feel very Are you writing like cable cars? Oh no. um I I'm not br- no. I, I, yeah, not not ideally, no. I'm not no. a fan of being up high. No. Not really. I've got Margaret Gray and she says, I've been planning some plein air, but I keep making excuses not to go. Too hot, heavy to carry, but I, really it's fear and laziness. Easier to follow my usual path to creativity than try and possibly fail at a new venture. I have all that I need to do, just need to get out there. Yeah, well, you know what you need to do? You need to go on your calendar, book out <laughs> some time yeah. specifically to do that. There you go, Margaret. That's a challenge from us. Um, yeah, that's a challenge from us to get that booked in and go and do it. Uh, Mary Flynn, buildings, because I suck at perspective. And Mary, I know that most people seem to um, fear perspective, but basically if you, you don't even have to understand perspective. You just have to look at the angles, and as long as you get those um, right, then the perspective just follows, doesn't it? Draw what you see. Draw what you see, exactly. I've got Ben King, and he says, painting. I'm slowly getting into colour blending with digital work, but the cost and time involved in painting to do it right has always been a barrier to me. I've got Rob Myers. Drawing large scale has always been something I've wanted to do. I've yet to decide on a subject and a surface. See, I still haven't gone big. You know, I keep saying I'm going to go big. I've now got the easel. Yeah, so I thought you bought some A1 boards. I have. I've got A1 point, boards. I've now got the easel. Did I tell you about my easel? 
No. So I ordered this easel. I've been deciding for ages which easel to get because obviously I can't work on the flat with this A1. And um, I really wanted a table one. But then when I was looking, there were hardly any table ones that would hold A1 size. It was a lot smaller. So I found this one that's not a table one. It's a floor standing. But someone on Amazon said, I use this as a table easel. I thought, oh, perfect. And they showed a picture of it. Little did I realise their ceiling must be quite a bit higher than mine. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. So I've got it. And it just, I think it will just fit on my table. Just. Because I've almost got a light that hangs down there. So, uh, yeah. I've See, I've got my easel. Like... Will take, will take really, really, really big canvases. But the bigger the canvas, what happens is... I have to then put my easel on a specific place in the art room because it's got sloping roofs and the highest point is in the middle. Yeah. Sloping ceiling, should I say. And then what happens is I have to... The, the bigger the painting, the lower I have to go. Uh, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And if it's a massive painting, I'd have to be sitting on the floor to, to get to it because the bottom would be on the floor, which would be really weird. I haven't actually painted that big yet. That is a right one day I think One day I want to. That is yeah. something I'd love to do. That. So I, I do need to try uh, that. Yeah. Right. Is I, it you next? Yes, it's me. It's I've got Gabriella Pop, and she says in an exhibition I had to draw a portrait of an unknown guest. There was live music, improv, and my process was projected to screen. Everybody was able to watch. I was terribly scared, but after a few minutes, I nearly forgot the audience. It was a hundred miles out of my comfort zone. I'd love to. God, have seen it, it would do be a hundred miles out yeah. of mine as well. <laughs> I'd love to see her do that. <laughs> oh, me too. Um, I have got Andy W. Art. Caricature is well out of my comfort zone. I wouldn't want to offend a sitter who is paying hard-earned money for a drawing. I don't mind lampooning politicians, though. They usually deserve it. I've got Jessica I guess Orr. that's why they're so often oh. um, in these caricature drawings. It's usually politicians, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, because nobody minds. I've got <gasps> Jessica Orr. I struggle with green. So I keep avoiding it overall. So many shades, none of them right. They get muddy so fast. I'm sure you've got a tip for this, have you? Well, I'm just going to say you didn't um, ever want to paint green, did you? Um, yeah, it wasn't because of this, though. I just didn't use it. There was no reasoning. Mm. And I don't like the colour green, which is really interesting. But, um, and I never used to work with greens at all. Well, I did. I had to sometimes. I never enjoyed working with green. It was my least favourite colour until... I wanted to paint wine bottles and I did a series, I think I did a five, five wine bottle paintings in the end, or it might have been four, I can't remember. Um, it was just green wine bottles and oh my gosh, I so fell in love with green. I really, really fell in love with green and um, you know, the amount of colour there was in a green bottle was incredible. But I guess the, the one tip I would say about using green is I couldn't make greens um the way i do without using reds which is interesting um so but also if you work with transparent colors you're far less likely to get mud so that's my so pick. so give us an example of a green i can't really because i can't i kind of wing it so for no, instance, but like I say use... you're talking about transparent so you're talking about stuff like uh is ultramarine a transparent for example what blue yes, would be a transparent? Yeah. Uh, well, what blue, an ultramarine blue, would be transparent? What yeah. about a Prussian? So just... Yes, I believe that is yeah. transparent. Yeah. But a co cobalt wouldn't be. Right. It, well, that wouldn't be. Um, you can use a viridian, it's, I think it's called viridian green, which is like acidic, acidic green from a tube. And it's not something you would, you would use for something in a natural, you know, if you wanted to create beautiful natural landscapes, you, you wouldn't paint, um, the grass in viridian green, but what you could do is you could mix the viridian green with, um, say, some a little uh, amount of vermilion red or um, al uh, alizarin crimson, that kind of transparent reds, and then you will not get, you won't get mud. What you'll get is a neutralized shade of that green. 
And then you can also mix with yellows as well. For instance, Indian yellow, that's a lovely transparent green, uh, sorry, yellow. So I, that's my tip is using transparent, but read the label because I might have just reeled off a load of colours that some of them aren't, but I'm sure they are because they're what I use do, do they and, say, and they work for do me. they say on them transparent? Yeah, on, on, the, the on, the, on a yeah. tube. On a, or you can just print out a list of the, um, the colours you use. So say for instance, I use, I use Gamlin. Um, some of my oils are also Windsor & Newton. Just go onto Google and um, print out a, a list of their their colours and it'll tell you which ones are semi-transparent, which are transparent, which are you know, are opaque. Sometimes you're going to need opaque, especially, you know, you're going to need to mix some white in and things like that, and that's fine. But the secret to not having muddy colours is to use a minimum of opaque colour, as in not, not the amount of colour you're using, but the amount of colours that are opaque together, if yeah, you like. yeah. And try to to stick with them more, and that that goes for um, watercolor as well. You can still get opaque sort of watercolors, and they are a great way of making mud. Cadmiums, cadmium colors are, are renowned for making mud. So, Brilliant. You know, I don't that use cadmium. Blue is opaque, isn't it? Uh, well? I don't. Uh, what? Sorry, cerulean blue. That, oh, you know cerulean. That? So that's it. Sorry. Yeah. Cerulean blue, uh, and and things like um, cadmium yellow or cadmium ye- lemon, they are awful for mixing. I think. I mean, this is just my opinion. I I I use the thing is when you're an artist, you use color, and you start to be fairly instinctive about it over a period of time, and you just grab what you know works for you. So you stop thinking about the fact that it's transparent or it's this or it's that. But and once you've you kind of get to know your colours and how they work for you, you won't you won't have to think about it. But you do have to think about it if you're scared to doing it. If you're scared to like if you're scared of a compl- of a particular colour, yeah. Then the best thing to do is to make yourself create something or perhaps if you've got say in the house you've got some I don't know some a green glass I mean, you might not want to do glass um you might prefer to do a green vase and a cup and saucer with green in the only way you're going to get over that struggle is by doing that is it that's all you can do and that's exactly what I did I thought I, I hate using green so I'm gonna work with green and I did and I absolutely love working with green now it's one of my favorite colors to use we should have done this as an episode anyway, on colour. There we go. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we could do a whole episode on that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I have got Shauna Shufford. I have been scared to do anything. Uh, I'm just trying to get back into artwork after 18 years of stepping away from it. I'm doing sketches of people, shapes and things, and I see a screw up and I just freak out. Well, Shauna, all I can say is I've been exactly where you are. You know, I stepped away from art for a very long time, had my kids. I mean, I was never like an artist or anything like that in the first place, but I used to love drawing. I used to do a fair amount of it. And then I just didn't anymore. And it was a a long time later that I started up again. And, you know, I was in the same position as you. I was really scared to do it. I was scared of failing. Um, But honestly, you have to... Not be afraid to be bad. We always say that, Tara. Don't be afraid to be bad because you have to be bad in order to get good. So every one of those sketches you do where you're freaking out when you see a screw up, what you should be doing is thinking, I've screwed up. Brilliant. I've learned something. I won't do that again. And it's not just beginners that screw up. I mean, I I was talking at the beginning of the episode how I got really fed up and was in a bad mood because I created two bad paintings. So it happens to everybody. Um, Yeah. I've got Cheryl Moore, and she says she's scared or she's worried about sending her artwork because of all that you have to do that comes with it. So there's taxes, shipping, sending an invoice, the whole works. Yeah. I mean, I sell my art, but <laughs> there is an element to when one sells, I'm like, oh, my God, I've got to post it. Yeah, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. Yeah. yeah. The easiest one I ever posted was the great big three and a half by four foot painting I had to post to Massachusetts it was the easiest thing in the world because it was so big I had to get a a professional art company to do it and they came around and they actually bespoke made a box for it and did the whole thing for me of course when it's small in fact small artworks are are fairly easy to post as well it's those kind of medium-sized ones isn't it 
bit of a nightmare. Yeah, I, d- I don't like posting. So, I've got Susan Colstein. She says, draw a person. She's scared to draw a person. Um, yeah. Oh, my favourite subject. Your favourite subject to draw as well. I love drawing people. I really do. But I know what you're saying. And I think maybe one of the problems is people expect that they draw a person and they've got to get an absolute likeness, like a mirror image of that person. Use the person as as just, um, I don't know, you're, you're just trying to... Say, for instance, Tara, you and I go out sketching, don't we, sometimes, yeah. a day in London or whatever. And we, we, don't, we don't draw the people in front of us with um that thing that we oh right it's got to be a dead likeness it hasn't we're just trying to capture a moment in time and there is a person there work from their positioning and everything but yeah just don't worry about it try not to overthink it just just get on and draw the shapes concentrate on the big shapes then the little shapes and then the detail and i'd say don't draw people you know because that makes it become a more critical thing draw just people multi free and it doesn't matter if it doesn't look like them You know, you're just practicing and nobody's going to be too critical then. Exactly. And we have a brand new question for you, which is, if your art could talk, what would it say to you? If your art could talk, what would it say to you? Okay, I was waiting for you to ask me. (laughs) There you go. Tara. I didn't know what the question was. if, if If your art could talk, what would it say to you? Uh, well, they all look a bit pissed off sometimes, their expression. <laughs> so they'd probably just swear at me and tell me to leave them alone while they get a bit brooding and moody and go hide in a box. <laughs> what, what about yours? Where are you going? Oh. Don't leave me like this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave me. No, well, mine are mine just drying at the moment, waiting for me to carry on working on it. So, uh, yeah, they're yeah. getting a bit bored. They're getting bored of waiting for me to, to get on with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, as always, you can tweet us your answers to Kit Creatives or let us know in the Facebook group, which if you haven't joined, I highly suggest you do. Um, we'll put the question up there on the Facebook page and, of course, on our Instagram, which is Kit in the Creatives. So we hope that gave you the kick in the creatives you needed. Don't forget to pop over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And, of course, there you can also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you are enjoying the podcast, we'd be really grateful if you would leave us a review on iTunes. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been or so whatever, long. Uh, yeah. yeah, or whatever platform you, you happen to listen to us on. We love having a review and we always read them out, don't we, Tara? Yeah. Um, so you can just give us a star rating otherwise if you haven't got a lot of time. And also don't forget to check out and subscribe to our Kicking the Creatives newsletter to keep up with all the challenges, tips and the podcast episodes. And don't forget, if you enjoy what you, if you enjoy what we do, rather, and you'd like to help support us um, with the cost towards uh, running Kick and the Creatives, you can now help us by buying us a coffee. And you can find a Kofi link on our website where you can do just that. And we want to say um, a massive thank you to our latest supporters, um, and they are Lisa Montanero. She says thanks for the laughs and the inspo. And Kim Kerno, thank you so much, Kim. We really appreciate the support. You all help us to keep this podcast going. Anyway, that is it for this week, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon. So, oh, before I go on, Tara, have you got can a, I just, any trigger? Can I just stop a minute? Because didn't he, Kev, I don't know what he's doing out there, but Kevin is doing something and bashing things around. Hang on a minute. I, he's not hoovering naked, is he? I don't know he? what he's doing. <laughs> if he's bashing around, my goodness. <laughs> Maybe he needs to put his pants on. <laughs> Do you know what he's doing? Hoovering naked? Putting together a steam mop that got delivered. <laughs> oh, that he definitely doesn't want to do that naked. It's supposed to be... Uh, that would not be a good idea. It's supposed to be working, but instead he's assembling a steam mop on the stairs, which is directly outside my you room. You weren't kidding, were you, when you said he was a clean freak? No.